Oh, yeah. 
And this chapter, the fourth canto, is entitled Paranjan Becomes a Woman in the Next Life. Okay, uh, you won't be able to see the verse, I'll just chant myself. Is that your normal convention? Okay. So, um, Ipa Grihan Sutan Bogan, by the Bima Directiona, and Vata Vata Padiesham. We go again. And Vata Vata Pandesham, Jyotish Neva Rajani Karan. Okay. It va giving up. Rehan, Rehan, home, Sutan, children, Bogan, material happiness, Vaidabi, the daughter of King Vaidava, Madira Ikshana, with enchanting eyes, Anvada, Vada. Anvadavata following Pandya Isham King Malaya Dwaja Jyotishna Eva like the moonshine the Jani Karam translation of the place upon this just as the moonshine falls and moon at night, immediately after King Malayadwaj departed from Kulachala, his devoted wife, whose eyes were very enchanting, followed him, giving up all homely happiness despite family and children. Just as in the Vanapra stage, the wife follows the husband. Similarly, when the spiritual master retires from the Niranjan Bhajan, some of his advanced disciples, some of his advanced devotees follow him and engage in his personal service. In other words, those who are very fond of family life should come forward in the service of the spiritual master and abandon so-called happiness afforded by society, friendship, and love. A verse by Sri Vishnath Chakravali Thakur in his Guru Vastaka is significant in this regard. Yasya Prasada Bhagavad Prasada. A disciple should always remember that by serving the spiritual master, he can easily advance in Krishna consciousness. All the scriptures recommend that it is by pleasing the spiritual master and serving him directly that one can attain the highest perfection of devotion service. The, the word Madhirekshana is also significant in this verse. Sri Jiva Goswami has explained in his, in his Sandhava that the word Madhira means intoxicated. If one's eyes become intoxicated upon seeing the deity, he may be called Madhirekshan. King Vaidabi's eyes were very enchanting. Just as one's eyes are Madhirekshan when engaged in seeing the temple deity, Unless one is an advanced devotee, he cannot fix his eyes on the deity of the temple. Shri Aghaita Tadabara Shri Asad Gaur Bhagavad Gita 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. 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 Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama
you understand how it works, right? So the idea is that you can't force anything. What we'll see increasingly in Kali Yuga is the movement, for the movement to move, for the movement to move, there has to be much more emphasis on inspiration and much less emphasis on force. So what are people looking for? I was listening to something this morning and it was inspiring this understanding that the first, the first situation that every single one of us have to deal with is, is the issue of identity. Who am I? What am I? How am I? And the Bhagavad Gita purely um, very nicely deals with this as the first teaching. The Hino Sunyata Dehi Kuma Yoganantara Tata Dehantara Prapti Dira Tata Nimunite The real teaching, the foundation teaching, you're not this particular body. But it doesn't stop there. It is actually that not only are we a servant of Krishna, not only are we a loving servant of Krishna, but actually even more foundational is to understand that you are a loved servant, a beloved servant of Krishna. The way that the entire material world works, in fact, the way that reality works, is all about this reciprocation. So when people put affection into us, it activates something very deep within us. Because we are loving beings by nature, we are built for love, and the goal of our culture is to perfect that loving propensity. That's our goal. That is how the, the entire world will become Krishna conscious. Because it will be because what what the heart and the soul aspires towards, they will find it in the association of Vaishnavas. And whether conscious or unconscious, it will trigger something, it will awaken something. I did some kind of, I did some study a few years ago, and I saw how whatever it is, it's working in the material world, it's somehow connected to the scriptures. It has some, it has some kind of linkage to the scriptures. For example, in the uh, uh, let's see, in the in the education system, the the nature of men is that they'll want to kind of engage in some kind of boisterous activity, right? Whether it's sports, martial arts, whatever it is. So when they're given some kind of outlet for that, a healthy expression of that, then they feel more calm, they feel more peaceful, they can move forward. You see, it's the idea that we have some fundamental nature. And that fundamental nature is going to come out in some way, shape, or form. Where we, where we have the choice is three options, at least three options. We either suppress that nature, then it explodes. We bring it out in a, in a kind of short-term exploitative way, or we give some healthy expression to that tendency. You make you understand the point. And the whole idea of Krishna consciousness is to take us from the human platform all the way to transcendence. How is this done? It means to pick up the devotees where they are in order to take them to where they should be going. That's actually how it works. For instance, if someone's a young person, one of them needs a young person. You say, oh, but they're, but they're, they're, not, they're not a young person because they're not the body, they're a spirit soul. They are, they're a spirit soul in the body of a young person going through that stage of life of a young person. So what do they need? If you look carefully, it means a combination of things. It means taking care of the human needs of that person as a young person, but in a way that connects into Krishna. That's actually the formula. And it will be the same thing for Brahastas. Okay, they're not the body, they're a spirit soul. Yes, but they're a spirit soul in the body going through the Brahasta experience. So then again, we understand what the needs of a grasta are but in relation to the fact that they are a spirit soul ultimately, so connecting it to Krishna. And then in this purple, what is it speaking about? So after Brahmachari life, after grahasta life, Prabhupada writes in the purple, just as in the Vanapra stage, the wife follows the husband, and then he makes this analogy. Similarly, when the spiritual master retires from the Nirjan Bhajan, 
Some of his advanced devotees follow him <coughs> and engage in his personal service. So we have to, in our journey of Krishna consciousness, we have to really try to understand exactly what's actually going on. Our difficulties and our teaching. Although many people think it's our teaching, a difficulty is actually our application of our teachings. We don't understand what Prabhupada says, we don't understand Prabhupada's voice, and therefore we, we're terrible at applying his teaching. And you'll see, you'll see if you look carefully, that all the issues that we have in this movement are due to the misapplication of what Prabhupada has given. In order to apply the teachings properly, you actually have to love the devotees. You see? That is, it's not, it's not, it's not an optional extra. That is, that is a core element of the teaching. It is the core foundation of the teaching. Why? There's no way that anyone will understand that there is a supreme law to actually love them unless you love them. You understand? And, and, and we're like addicts in the material world. We're trying to give up the material addiction. People cannot give up an addiction unless they have a suitable alternative. An alternative which is both attractive and that is also fulfilling, so it allows them to maintain that change. You see, you're going to tell someone to give something up, but you've given them no alternative. Great. Watch how long that lasts. So, Krishna <coughs> consciousness is meant to be not just an alternative. It is meant to be a superior alternative. So my spiritual master is often saying that when you're talking about community, he said something very interesting, and it's actually a principle. So this is this is a principle that in any situation there are different perspectives, and both of them can be valid. So you're saying that when you build a community, we have to make it such that people can get more by coming into the community than they can by being separate from you. That, that's the onus of the leaders of the community. But then the people who join, that's what they're entitled for. The people who join the community should think, I'm joining so I can give. You see? But if, if both sides are doing what they're meant to be doing, then it works really well. You see the point? So I'm a leader, I'm thinking of you. You're coming to contribute, you're thinking of the service. Then it works. It's actually the same form in any relationship. Where does this come from? This is the law of relationship. Krishna is saying that point to Arjuna. As you surrender unto me, I will reward you accordingly. That's the law of relationships. You care about Krishna, he cares about you. You don't care about Krishna, he becomes neutral. Right? Whenever you meet someone, you see people, even in the material world, who have good self-esteem, that's how they act. Naturally, because when someone is self-respecting, that's how they act. A self-respecting person acts like that. They'll reach out to you. They, their default is to be friendly, trusting, you know, warm, all that kind of stuff. If you reciprocate, the, the, the exchange continues. If you don't, they don't hate you. Okay, maybe this person's got some issues. I'm trying to be friendly. There's, there's some kind of block. They don't want to reciprocate. That's okay. Now I'm neutral. And I go somewhere else. Right? It's not like, oh, why are they talking to me? And no, these people. It's, no, no. I understand it's your issue. It's nothing to do with me. But you know, if you can't, if you can't engage in this exchange of love, I understand. There's many other people. Come another eight billion. You can try that. Yeah, that's actually how it works. These, these, these patterns are there in the material world because they're there in Krishna. This is how it works. So what we have in the material world, as Prabhupada would say, is the perverted reflection of the spiritual world. And that is actually very, very exciting because if we understand this properly, we can learn so many things about Krishna, we can learn so many things about ourselves as well. And we can avoid so much pain and suffering. I really want to plan a scene with all of you, really get into a, looking at how you apply the teaching. Yeah? So we said the first thing is the teaching has a mood. But the teaching itself has a mood. The mood is always 
and perfection and compassion. And analyzed every single teaching in this, in this literature. And that's why also, and that's why also we, we don't we don't manage to convey the teaching so much to people if we don't convey the mood. In fact, in Kali Yuga, actually, the mood comes first. In other words, in Kali Yuga, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. Okay, unless that mood is there, the other things forget it. Nothing will be digested. There's a principle in Ayurveda called Sadaka Atma. When the child is brought up in a, in a kind and loving and compassionate way, especially by their parents, their caregivers, it, it develops such a strong Sadaka Atma, which is a, like an internal fire that allows them to digest emotions and, and digest experiences. So as they go through life, sometimes they'll give people a harsh or rude or um, sour manipulative. But because that child got so much unconditional love from, the, from their caregivers, and I use the word caregivers on purpose, it should definitely come from parents, but in Kali Yuga, it may be even other seniors, but as long as they get that, it allows them to digest all the disappointments that come through life. And believe it or not, the proper application of Krishna consciousness will take, make that sadhaka up and place like an inferno. It will literally place like an inferno. So if there is a proper application of this Krishna consciousness, what it actually meant to do is make you so internally strong, so internally strong that you can move through all the obstacles of your karma that you have to work through in this particular life to get back to an eternal platform of happiness. But it's based upon application. There's a, there's a very powerful clue in this book. I'm just going to read this. Now, let's see. I want to read this sentence. A disciple should always remember that by serving the spiritual master, he can easily advance in Krishna consciousness. All the scriptures recommend that by pleasing the spiritual master and serving him directly, one can attain the highest perfection of stage of devotion of life. Okay. We've been, taking, we've been speaking about faith on this retreat. Shraddha. The word shraddha, sh, the first part, shra, it comes from the Sanskrit word brit, which means the heart. And that the, the suffix, da, it comes from the word which relates to shelter. So shraddha means where the heart finds shelter. That is the actual meaning of shraddha. When the, the um, in the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali Muni, he writes, I think the first, the first section, chapter, um, verse number 20, he says, Shraddha Virya Smriti. Yeah, so Shraddha gives Virya, it gives drive, determination, and Shraddha also gives confidence. Yeah. And Smriti, it means great intelligence and concentration. We will explain to some of you on this retreat, the focus is actually the accumulation of faith in a particular place. You understand? When your faith builds up in, in one particular place or in this circle, one particular person, that's, that gives you focus. What was, and this is so powerful. What I've been studying in the scriptures is how there's a, an amazing coherence. There's a term in the, in the, in the scriptures, it's mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's called Shastra Yukti. It means the logic of the Shastra. The, the actual purpose of studying the teachings is to see how the whole thing fits together like a jigsaw puzzle. Oh, right, the couple says it, right, that connects with this bit and that connects here. And then oh, that teaching, that goes here and that goes with this. So you're meant to put the whole thing together like a jigsaw puzzle so you can understand how everything works. So this idea of, of the faith, faith brings focus. And, and it's always supported by the statements of the Acharya. And this is where we're going. So what does Prabhupada say? He says that my secret is that I, I did not deviate from the order of my spiritual master. Or in other places, he says, I made the order of my spiritual master my what? My right hand and soul. Right, you've heard this before. That means he had one focus. Ekeha Kuru Nandana. His intelligence was one point, and that's actually a sign that we're dealing with someone who has tremendous faith. 
You see, as we said before, everything has its luxury of your symptoms. You can tell so many things about yourself if you know what the symptoms are. <laughs> Brother Bhakti and I have often had discussions about, you know, understanding natures. And so when we were on the journey here, you know, and you know, we were speaking, and she could easily explain, like, this kind of nature has these qualities. So I could understand just by hearing her talk that she understands the symptoms of each particular type of personality. So in any situation, if you meet someone, she can just watch those attributes and understand, okay, I get it. I'm looking at these attributes. I understand, therefore, that we have this kind of character. You see? And that's actually what's meant to happen throughout our Krishna consciousness. This teaching is like x-ray vision. The honest, the honest truth, this teaching is like x-ray vision. If you understand this properly, whatever situation you're in, it's crystal clear. I get it all right. So for example, when you see someone like Prabhupada, this focus on the orders of the guru, it means, oh great, this person has great faith. They're able through thick and thin to stay focused on the orders given to them by this guru. This person has great faith. There are so many symptoms and that's how we understand everything, because it is a science. And Krishna explains this to Arjuna, at the Atma Vidya, Vidya Nam. He says, of sciences, I am the supreme science of self-realization. And again, because we don't understand it, we don't apply it properly. Because we don't apply it properly, we don't get the results. And then when we don't get the result, we think there's something wrong with this Krishna consciousness wrong. There's something wrong with our application of this Krishna consciousness. For example, you know, we, we see that we have so many, I mean, incredible young people. And if you look at them, if you actually know what to look for, you can tell immediately these people are incredibly powerful people. If you know the symptoms of a powerful person, you can just watch them and you can understand immediately their intelligence is way above average. They are very difficult, great karma, I mean, exceptional karma. Even they don't have, even they have no idea what they're carrying, you can tell. Because the way that they act is like, wow, if you knew how powerful you were, you would waste your time this at all. You clearly have absolutely no idea. And of course, you, the, the, this is a heartbreaking thing. They have no idea because no one's told them. Yeah, so that's the point. You can see clearly just by watching, I right, get it. You're basically a genius. You're a very powerful person. You have huge amounts of not just material piety, but spiritual credit, and you have absolutely no idea what to do with the people. It's like you, can't, you see someone, <coughs> they're homeless, and you know you've forgotten your pants are building in. What the hell are you doing begging for, begging for scraps on the street? You have absolutely no idea. You should be at home in the mansion. Probably, if we called your dad, he would send the show for driven limo to pick you up. Yeah, and, and you can clearly see these people have absolutely no idea what they carry. This application. Yeah. So there has to be there has to be a more of an emphasis on awakening our full potential in Krishna consciousness. That's be more of an emphasis. And uh, the truth is, don't wait for anyone else to do it for you. <laughs> Let's be honest. You need to do it. Right? At least start that journey. And if you start that journey, Krishna will also get involved. One other point to bring out in this purple is that, um, well, there are two other things to bring out. So how do we get this? How do we move forward on this? A key clue is given in this particular purple about the service of the spiritual master and why this is so important. So service to the spirit, service to the spiritual master, is service to Krishna. That he is the form of Krishna that's going to reach out to us in a way that we can perceive. In fact, that's one that's, that's an interesting parallel with purple. It's talking about the spiritual master. It's also talking about the deity. So how does Krishna reach out to us? He does so in many in many esoteric ways. Even Shastra is a, is a form of Krishna. But he also especially reaches out to us in the form of the deity, Archana. Krishna is present in that particular deity form. And as we approach him with devotion, 
he becomes more and more manifest. This is a very interesting thing, and this is another principle. It's your devotion to Krishna that brings him out in the environment. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whether you're in front of the deity, whether you're at school, whether you're at college, he's actually always there because he's there in every single atom. But when you have devotion for him, when you want to know him, then what does he say? He gives knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. You want to know him, knowledge, he's going to be, he's going to be in the environment. And he'll show you, he and the glory. Again, he's like, dude, okay, do your thing. It's okay. Yeah. So it's no one else's responsibility. Now we can say, oh, but there's different challenges that we have in spiritual life. I want to reframe that for you. I want to reframe that for you. There's different opportunities for graduation <laughs> in spiritual life. We've all, we've all enrolled in the same university, the University of Bhakti, but each and every one of us are on different courses. Okay? Someone's a first year student, right? They may be a little bit kind of crazy, you can see they don't know much, but they're sincere, right? They're just they're first semester. Okay, good. They're just trying to find out with what's going on in the university. You know, you're, you're studying, but you want to check out the social life. You feel you've got a bit of time, right? Someone else is about to graduate, okay? So there are different stages, different levels of advancement in the University of Love, in the University of Bhakti. Now, we all know in the education system, students, they get down, right? They're there with their, with their books, they've, they've done, they've got personal tutors, they've been working before they get there. They're like, I want to ace the exams, right? What, what's, what is it, what's in your system? See, in the UK, we just talk about you've got a first, a second, etc. So do you have a different system? Because I like someone said something about a 4.7 average, or I don't understand what they're talking about, to be honest. Just like a really high GPA. High GPA? GPA. GPA, GPA right? Great point average. Great point average, okay. So whatever the system, whatever the system, it's the same point. You want, you want to excel at the university. Why? Because if you graduate and graduate well, you go out into the society, you have all these options, isn't it? Right? You, you, did, you, you had a good, you got a good GPA from a good university. All the options are open to you. I know um, No, it's this interesting. Let's go back to the spiritual master. So Krishna reaches out in different ways. By your devotion is present. And I promise you that. I know one devotee recently they were reading Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> and what happened was they were reading the Bhagavatam and then they were they were trying to make a certain note on their uh, on their phone. And then Krishna communicated to them through their phone and he just wrote three words: I love you. Like that. Just through the environment. If you want Krishna, he's always there for you. Even when it seems that he's not there for you, he's there for you. He's there in different Okay, I gave him all this, all this help, all this advice, all this guidance. Now I'm going to step back. Let's see what she does with it. Okay? And in other cases, he's there coming through. You can try this as an experiment. See, everything has its implications. In Jiva Goswami's Tapas and Dhabha, he explains there are 10 types of Brahman or evidence. Right? He talks to, and the first three, he says, are particularly relevant to Vaishnavas. Shabda, Anuman, Pratyaksha. Shabda means the statements of the scripture. Anuman means the, the inference, right? what, the logic or what's implied by those statements. They have Pratyaksha. Pratyaksha means direct perception, like you know, what you see in the real, in the physical world, in the environment. So these three are particularly important, and Prabhupada speaks about them in various times in different ways. For example, Prabhupada says, you can judge a tree by its what? Fruit, right? That means you can see something you're doing is working by the results in the external world. That's called what? Pratyaksha, right? Direct perception, what's going on physically. Prabhupada, of course, will constantly speak about Shabda, because Shabda means what? Shabda is, is Shastra. Right? You'll constantly say, read the books. Interesting side point here. 
Prabhupada is one, there's one lecture, and Prabhupada is, is giving a class, and he asks the devotees in the audience, he said, do you read my books? And he says to them, he says, you are restless because you do not read my books, right? It's easy to just pass over all of these kinds of things. Yeah, that's nice, right? Yeah, that's but now I want to bring it down to so you can really understand what Papa is trying to say. Restlessness is a symptom of the most of what? Passion. What he's actually saying is, if you want to be free of the mode of passion, so you're not restless. Oh, and by the way, if someone's restless, what's their focus like? It's all all over the place, right? So what he's saying is, what will destroy that mode of passion and focus? What will do it? What will destroy that, that restlessness and that lack of focus? What activity? Exactly. You see how it works? So he was to Prabhupada, just like this analogy, he will speak about things directly and he will speak about things indirectly. Let me see if I can actually just show you one, one other thing that I found from the. I read this. Actually, I was, I was working abroad. I was in Ireland for work. We were delivering. So my company sent me there to deliver some training. So in the evening, I went to the local temple in Ireland. I just wanted to just check it out and see what was going on. And there was a bunch of Gita class going on. And I remember very clearly, the devotee was reading from the 14th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, text number 27. And when he was reading, I saw something in that, the way that Prabhupada broke things down. So I just wanted to show this to you, because you'll get, a, you'll get a sense. If you understand this, when you read the books, you're going to see a lot more in there. You're going to see all kinds of additional teachings, which are not obvious to you when you first look at it. I'm just going to give you an example of that person. Let me get to that particular um, statement. So this is, if my memory serves me correctly, so chapter 14, yeah, the three modes of material nature, text number 27. Let's see. Okay, no, actually, I'm just gonna go back to see which particular verse, because it's not 27. In one second. Okay, this is it. It's, Chapter 14, text number 22 to 25. I'm not going to, I'll read part of it, but I want, I want to show you the connection between what's actually stated in the verse um, and what's actually stated in the purple. Okay, or just a connection between the two. So this is 22 to 27. I won't read all of that, I'll just read part of it. So it begins The Supreme Personality of God itself, O Son of Hanvi. <coughs> He who does not hate illumination, to so get this, he does not, who does not hate illumination, attachment, and delusion when they are present, or long for them when they disappear. That's how it begins. Now, this chapter, chapter 14 of the Bhagavad Gita, is entitled The Three Modes of Material Nature, right? So just bear that in mind as a context. The chapters on the free motor material nature. This is text number 22 to 25. So now you're going to break this down with me. He says, Krishna says, he who does not hate illumination. That's one particular thing, illumination, but it represents something. Okay? He who does not hate illumination. Illumination represents the mode of what? Goodness, right? He does not. Who does not hate illumination? Attachment. Attachment represents the mode of, or sorry, and illusion. Delusion represents the mode of ignorance, right? So he's actually talking about the three modes, you see? And this is actually how the scripture works, by the way. Sometimes it will be spoken of as a category, the mode of goodness. Sometimes it says speaking of it as a category, it will just give you a symptom of that category. Now it's more than that, right? So Prabhupada in the purple, so I'll, I'll read this, this beginning of this verse again. Also in the Pandu, he who does not hate illumination, attachment, and delusion when they are present or long for them when they are when they disappear. So he doesn't hate its present or long for it when it disappears. Now I'm going to go to the purple. Uh, let me see. There's a particular place in this purple that I want to just read from. Let's see.
I don't make, I guess the other thing is just to make a point. Because when Prabhupada is speaking, or when Krishna is speaking about hatred, in the purple, Prabhupada will speak about aversion. It's the same thing. If you're averse to something, you hate it. And then when in the purple, sorry, in the verse where Krishna is talking about longing for those things when they disappear, longing means attachment. So Prabhupada will break things down in the same way but using different words. Okay? So when you understand the symptoms of something, so when you read it, it's like, oh right. He's speaking about the three modes, they're just using different words. Right? There was another thing I was reading recently, and one in one purple, Prabhupada is it's in the third canto Bhagavatam, um, chapter 28. Yeah, because I was reading it uh, with my wife. So when Prabhupada is, is writing in one of the purples in that particular chapter, he will talk about um books um when Krishna when um when where Krishna speaks books where Krishna is speaking and books where Krishna is being spoken of. Okay, so what's the, what's our famous book where Krishna is speaking? Bhagavad Gita. And where Krishna is being spoken of is the Srimad Bhagavatam. And then, so you see that sentence, the Prabhupada writes it, and a few sentences later, he says exactly that. He says, the books of Krishna, where Krishna is speaking means Bhagavad Gita. And book where Krishna is being spoken of means the Srimad Bhagavatam. So again, you hear about it through the symptom. And that's meant to give you the clue, oh, he's speaking about this. So the real teaching is the ability to see how all of the teachings are connected. Right? Oh, Prabhupada says, oh, he means this. Got it. You're meant to see it like that and put all the pieces together. And then if you do that, you can see everything. Even, for example, you can see what's going to happen. You can actually see what's going to happen. For example, if a situation is in the mode of ignorance, what, what does the mode of ignorance lead to according to the Bhagavad Gita? It leads to what kind of outcome? What does Krishna say? It leads to destruction, right? Activities in the mode of ignorance lead to destruction. They, they decay, they, they, they fall apart. Activities in the mode of passion, they begin like what? Nectar and they end like poison, right? So you can, so when you go out, out and about, you can just look and see what's going on, right? These people are doing this in the mode of ignorance. This project's going to fall apart. These people are doing this in the mode of passion. They're going to be super enthusiastic in the beginning, but eventually it's all going to fade away. These people are doing this in the mode of goodness. Right. I can tell there's some future in this project. You see? Because it actually, the, the entire material world, it actually works according to this. Right? So sometimes people think, oh, we need to go somewhere else to figure out how things are working. <laughs> you don't need to go anywhere else. Where, wherever else. you're going, believe me, it's already here. But it may be directly or stated indirectly. That's the trick. Yeah, so it's a certain type of vision that allows us to see, oh right, Prabhupada's he's got this. He'll say to you, look, if you do things in this way, this is where it's going to end up. Right? You do things in this way, this is what's going to happen. I was involved, <laughs> I was not involved. I was invited to get, get involved in one particular project in London. And <laughs> the person who approached me, they, they just burned out so many Teams. And, and they already got this team together. You know, we could do this, it's gonna be good, we're gonna help some people like get involved. Get and, 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 and I just I just listened to them and they were telling me about how they set the whole thing up and I just hear the mode of passion. I just hear them. they just done this in the mode of passion. And it was worse than that. Not only did they set the whole thing up in the mode of passion, there was no they I knew also that they're so attached to do it retail way. So I could understand immediately, if I get involved in this, it's going to be a complete waste of time. The whole thing is destined to fall apart because of the way that they set it up and they're attached. So if someone's in the mode of passion, but they can hear, they can elevate them. But someone's attached to the mode of passion, that's like, they don't go, right? You know, it's going to go up like this, they have all this enthusiasm, yeah, we're going to do something. But you can see the whole way you set this up is the whole thing is destined to crash. So I, I just kind of, you know, actually, honestly, I didn't have time to get involved anyway. The only, the only way I would feel involved is I had to give up so many other things I was already doing. So I thought, there's no point. So I didn't get involved. Then I found out, it was like, I think it was a year or two years later, the whole thing had become some kind of internal. They actually kicked out the person who started the project. They were bitter, the other people were bitter, and it's like, yeah, that's exactly what Krishna said to happen. 
That's exactly what Krishna says that happened. This is the mode of passion. It goes up and the whole thing becomes a complete car crash eventually. It's just a question of how long the car takes to crash. Yeah? So it gives this kind of vision. The scripture gives this kind of vision. And service to the spiritual master is the key. See, science is how you can be empowered. I'm supposed to stop at 8 o'clock, right? Yeah, it's the same. Until the curtain's open. Okay, I'm old, and I'll finish soon. So, okay, okay, no worries. So, um, yeah, the secret is that the devotees, and this is the application of your spiritual life, there's a huge amount of spiritual power that you can get in your service. I've actually seen this, I've gone around the spiritual, uh, the physical world. Most people who say have absolutely no clue about how to be empowered. But believe me, empowerment is real, I'm, I'm telling you. And it's not, it's not, it's, by the way, it's not a metaphor at all. There is actually such a thing as spiritual potency. It's a real, it's a real, um, it's a real energy of Krishna. And actually, if someone's sufficiently sensitive, they can actually perceive it. You can directly perceive it. I'm saying to you on the basis that I promise you that and what the devotee is meant to do is you're meant to collect spiritual potency for your service. You know, if you want any references on this, you can read first canto Bhagavatam chapter 15, text number five. In that Prabhupada speaks about the emergency powers that was given to Arjuna to file on the vow of all the Kurukshetra. When Arjuna left, when Arjuna prepared to leave the world, all that potency was taken away from him, and Prabhupada explains that it wasn't necessary to have that potency to go back to the spiritual world. Another thing in relation to this particular verse that we're reading from, another reference on this is 8 Canto, chapter 15, text number 28. In that book, Prabhupada says something which is absolutely crazy. He says, Important than your own endeavor for advancement. Right? Again, reference 8, 15, 28. What that means is you can work as hard as you like and, be, and with, the, with the misconception that I'm making advancement because of my effort. That's, that's effort's important. Let's not, let's not minimize that. You have to make an endeavor. But if you have someone else who's trying to get the mercy of great devotees, they will, they will progress a lot faster than you will. Yeah? Because it's a gift that's given. Because what Krishna is trying to do through the whole process He's trying to prepare us for the spiritual world by getting us to sort out our ability to, to relate to each other properly in the mood of a loving and selfless servant. You understand? And you know when you're serving, how do you know when you're serving properly? Because you're actually happy. That's not my idea. Where is that stated? Krishna says the devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted. Why? Does he say to please Krishna? No. In order to completely satisfy the self. When you actually feel joyful in Krishna consciousness, it's actually a manifestation of Krishna in your heart being pleased. The joy of the devotee is the spillover of Krishna's own ecstasy because he's happy with what you're doing. That's how the process actually works. And you can progress. I mean, I know the devotee, I know one devotee in particular. He knows this actual size. I'm not sure how he figured it out. But I see the way that he does devotional service, and I see how everyone else does it. And I see he's miles ahead of him. Because he figured out that actually all the progress comes by getting the mercy that's bestowed upon you by a past devotee. They have Krishna. And if they're pleased with you, they can give you Krishna like this. They can just drop, they can, they can even speak to Krishna and say, Krishna, please help this person. You'll be immediately present. You see? So, what, you're, what we're looking for in spiritual life is you're actually looking for the mercy of great devotees. It will make your spiritual life take off. We can do all the techniques, and, and there's a place for the techniques and strategy and all that kind of stuff. But you should actually know it's like this the technique. Techniques and the strategies are like the vehicle, but your vehicle doesn't go as fuel. Okay? The fuel is the mercy of great devotees. That's the whole point. So you can pick up mercy from all the devotees, but especially the more pure they are, 
The more that they are pleased, the more mercy that comes in. And that pleases them even, it can be done even just by, by getting your physical body and sitting in the class with a submissive attitude of trying to receive whatever they have to give. I was, I was studying this for this retreat, and the key point that came up is that it's the attitude that makes all the difference. A spiritual master was complaining about the mood, right? In, in a nice way. And he was saying that he saw that, that when, when, the, when the attitude of respect dies in a culture, then you, what will happen is all the people in that culture become weak people. Because the moment they lose respect, they can't receive all the empowerment that comes from the senior. It's actually out of humility. Because what happens is when you're in the Association of Advanced Devotees, if you're humble, whatever potency they have it will come to you, and by the humility, you will be able to hold that potency. You see, that's why I think another piece you need to know. So it's so it's so much emphasized. And again, if you understand these qualities or symptoms, then you go anywhere and all you have to do is you have to look at the people humble and respectful to their seniors. If they are, they'll become powerful people. If they're not, they'll, they'll nothing, their, their car, their car isn't even, they're not even in the race. It basically, it just, you just look at, because you know the symptoms, right, you just watch them. Uh, do they have any humility and respect to their seniors? Okay, if they don't, that means there's no fuel in the tank. They can build the car. They can build the limo. They can they can you know, change the wheels, right? They, they can lights. Doesn't matter. The car doesn't go anywhere because there's no damn fuel in the tank. You see. So there are many secrets to spiritual life. And again, this is the point we made at the beginning, and then I'll, I'll end. I'll end the questions. Try to understand the issue isn't Prabhupada's teaching. I know people think it is, but to be honest, it's not. To be honest, Prabhupada, what he's describing, even the stuff that seems controversial, he's describing how the material energy works. Because we're attached, we don't want it to work that way. And he's like, dude, right? It's not a question of how you want it to work. If you a, a sane human being, what does a sane human being do? They try to understand things as they are, and they adjust accordingly. Because we still want to play God, we think it's going to be something else. And you'll go like that to your brain unless you accept the truth. Yeah. So the idea is, okay, how does it actually work? Okay, this is how it works. Okay, what does that mean for me? Okay, if I do this, things will move forward. Just like, for example, <laughs> When I, when I was growing up, the whole thing about self love you can be anything, you can be anything. That's a lie. It's a blatant lie. The person who's telling you that, they're trying to tell you that to sell you those, those courses. But like to be like, for example, with Steve Jobs, he's born with that. It's not that he didn't get it from university. Like, you know, I'm blank slate. I went to a great university and suddenly I became a, like a business genius. No way. That's, he's born with that nature. You see? So we want to know the truth. That's what it means to be humble. Humility, Prabhupada explains in one purple in Bhagavad Gita, humility means truthfulness. See, because when I'm humble, then I stop, I, I let go of this idea that the world has to be the way that I say it is, which is childish. And I understand, okay, this is, this is how it is. This is how it is. Okay, now I get how it is, then I'm going to act accordingly. Yeah, okay, so this time now? Okay. So I guess we'll stop there. Some food for thought, but you can get huge amounts of empowerment in this meeting, huge amounts. And if you get it, the spiritual life becomes easy. Anyway, we'll stop there. Sri Sri Radha Damadaki, Sri Sri Goni Pai, Sri 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 Dagna Parade, Sri Bhakti Maharani, Sri 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 Thank you so much.